Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about how the celestial objects or some of the celestial objects in our universe formed. So let's get started. So the first thing to understand um, about anything that's going on in space, especially how things formed, is gravity. And gravity is a mutual force of attraction that exists between all objects that have mass. So if something has mass, it has a force of gravity to it. And that force of gravity is pulling on all the other objects around it that have mass. But gravity depends on two things, and that is mass and distance. So the larger the mass of objects there is, the larger the gravitational pull. But if you have two objects that have a smaller mass, their pull between uh, uh, gravity between themselves is quite small. So us humans are very small related to um, most things in the universe. So since we have smaller mass compared to most things, yes, we have a gravitational pull, but it's not that much. But things like planets that are much larger have larger mass. So they have a larger pull of gravity. And that's why we are gravitationally pulled towards the center of the earth because the earth has such a large mass and we have a mass too and we're uh, there's a mutual attraction between us and the earth um and gravity also depends on distance so the closer the distance between two objects with mass the larger the gravitational pull kind of like a magnet so if these two masses are closer there's going to be a more of a pull between uh um uh, gravitational pull between these two objects but the farther away they are the less the gravitational pull is okay uh, and that's why since we're so close to earth we're gravitationally pulled by earth there's a stronger force of gravity um that is uh, uh, from earth on us uh that pulls us towards earth right but someone uh in space in a spaceship outside of the earth um orbit uh, is much farther from the Earth, so they're not necessarily going to be pulled by the Earth's gravity. Also, they may be pulled by another planet's gravity or something bigger, okay? So gravity depends on mass and distance, and that's really important for us to understand what we're about to talk about. So how did the universe start? We have uh, several theories, and uh, the theory that scientists most believe in or that we have the most evidence for currently is uh, the Big Bang Theory, okay? And scientists believe that the universe began from a small, dense, hot point, and it slowly started expanding. Yes, it's called the Big Bang, but it didn't really end up with an explosion. We just, scientists just think, uh, based on evidence that we have, that the universe was really, really small, just a little point, and it started expanding slowly, and we believe that it's still expanding. We're going to talk about this more further in the future and all the evidence that we have, but the Big Bang Theory is a scientific theory, meaning there's a lot of evidence behind it that the universe expanded from a small, dense point. So... Go ahead and write this down. The universe, um, we believe that the Big Bang Theory happened around 13.8 billion years ago. And please try to remember this and write this down. So in its early stages, the universe mostly consisted of gases such as hydrogen and helium. Notice that if you look at the periodic table, the, these are all the elements that exist um, in the universe. And hydrogen and helium are the simplest um elements hydrogen has only one proton and helium has two so those are pretty much the only gases that existed around that time so what happened well gravity caused these early gases of hydrogen and helium um, to clump together into large clouds that began to rotate so this is a cloud of hydrogen and helium right that started uh, to form and they started uh, now they have mass right so mass has gravity so the center of this mass started to pull into itself the gravity started to pull up everything together and as everything started clumping together into these clouds they started beginning to rotate because think about it the uh in space once there is a for force acting in a direction that force doesn't really stop going anywhere if there, because there's no opposing force like friction that we have on earth so if there's a force happening it's gonna keep going until something stops it that's why when these clouds start to contract it doesn't just stop there it just keeps going and it starts to rotate like this okay and this this cloud of gas and that uh, gas that we had started to rotate or spin so what happened? The clumps of gas started accumulating most in the center of the rotating disc, not dish, sorry. And the center had so much gravity that it turned into a black hole. 
A black hole is an area of such immense gravity that nothing, not even light, can escape from it. And that's what happened in the center of this giant cloud of gas. Uh, it started accumulating. All the mass started accumulating mostly in the center. And remember, the more mass you have, the more gravity you have, right? This part has so much mass in the center that it had such an immense gravity, gravitational pull that it turned into a black hole. Okay? So after that, what happened? Well, we have this black hole in the center now that's sucking everything in, it's, uh, in, including light, and we still have more gases uh, surrounding or rotating around uh, this disk, right, of cloud and gas. Um, and within this disk, we started forming more clumps of gas, as you can see, these small little clumps, because gravity is starting to act on the small masses as well, and everything's starting to clump together or come together, okay? So we formed a giant cloud of rotating gas, and now we're f forming smaller clumps of gas around this rotating gas. And those clumps of gas also started to accumulate just like before and rotate like this because the force doesn't stop. So the smaller clouds of gas around this black hole are called solar nebula. And the solar nebula is, are clouds of gas in the early universe. And this actually, this is this uh, gas or clouds of gas that started forming our solar system, okay? We call this the solar nebula, the cloud of gas that, in the early universe that led to the formation of the solar system. So what happened? So now we have this giant clump of um, gas with a black pole in the center. And then we have smaller clumps of gas that are also doing the same thing. They're clumping together and rotating. And this picture is a demonstration. It's not a real picture of what ha might have happened to these smaller clumps of gas. We're not talking about the whole thing, just a smaller clump of gas, okay? And within that smaller clump of gas, gravity started accumulating mostly or the all the most of the mass started accumulating in, in the center once again. And this time, since it's a smaller cloud of gas, and we're not talking about the whole cloud of gas, uh, just a part of the smaller cloud of gas, um, there's less gravity this time because it's a smaller mass. So this time, instead of creating a black hole, it started creating a small sun. And this is actually how our sun started to form. And our sun is a star, right? Our early stars were called protostars, and not just our sun, but many other stars started forming around this black hole, the where this cloud of gas uh, started rotating, okay? So not only do we have a black hole in the center here, all the smaller clouds of ga gas around this black hole also started to accumulate and rotate, and start they started forming small little stars in the center because of all the gravitational pull in the middle, okay? So... The formation of stars actually led to the creation of many galaxies. Remember, galaxies are clusters of stars. And this is because of gravity once again. And this includes our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy. This is a, an example of what the Milky Way galaxy looks like. And notice the Milky Way galaxy has a black, black hole in the center. And it has a cloud of gas surrounding it that's spiraling or rotating. And these... Um, the gases also contain billions of stars, clusters of stars. That's why we call it a galaxy. And our star, which is the sun, is right in the corner right here that was also forming around this time, just like this. Okay? So, the Milky Way's galaxy shape is spiral. We call the shape spiral. Do you see these arms, these spiraling arms? And remember, our solar system is kind of on the side, and we have in our galaxy, the center, we have a black hole. But not all galaxies are shaped like this. These are the other different shapes of galaxies. But our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, is shaped like a spiral. So go ahead and write this down. Galaxies, um, they formed in many different times. But our specific galaxy that we live in, the Milky Way galaxy, formed around 2 billion years after the universe formed. So around 13.6 billion years ago. And the shape of the Milky Way galaxy is spiral, although other galaxies have different shapes. So now we have a galaxy filled with stars, right? What happened after that? Well, stars create their own energy, remember? So stars started creating their own energy and all the other elements of the periodic table, all these elements that exist in the universe, by combining the existing hydrogen and helium. 
we're going to talk about this further in the future. But how do stars create their own energy? And what else do they do? Stars have so much energy because of their gravity, their gravitational pull inward. They actually combine hydrogen and then um, two hydrogens to form helium. And then they for combine helium together to form other elements like carbon. And then they form carbon combine carbon to form neon and so on so they're combining all these elements because of that intense gravity and all that energy and they're combining elements to form new elements and that's exactly how all the periodic table of elements began to form stars created them okay because stars create their own energy stars also create elements all the elements in the universe and guess what we're also made up of these elements so stars started releasing stardust as well. Stars explode, um, which we'll talk about. And there's dust of stars all around this cloud now. And the stars are also creating all these elements that are also not part of this cloud of gas. Now it's not just a cloud of gas. It's a cloud of dust and gas. And it's called the solar nebula, okay? Um, and what happened is, uh, and remember, we're st still forming uh so, sorry so our sun is a star right our sun is also doing this so what happened to the surrounding um gases around the stars that we create so our sun is a star right say this is one of the stars which is our sun our sun still had a uh, lots of gas and dust um revolving around it the uh, remainder of it right and that gas and dust started to collide with itself kind of like this and the collision of the gas and dust started forming smaller planets called our uh, early planets called planetesimals and those planets started clumping together because of gravity and started forming actual planets eventually and the extra dust that we have started uh, blew away into farther into the universe because of something we call the solar wind. So this is how our planets started forming, our moons started forming, things like asteroids and comets started forming after our sun was created. And all the other planets in the universe, not just from our solar system, started forming around other stars in our Milky Way galaxy. Remember, our galaxy has billions of stars. Our solar system is just one of them. Okay. So we have a little theory about how our, how our moon formed. And remember, this is a scientific theory. is based on uh, a lot of evidence. This is the most evidence we have on this. Um, back then, a small little planet called Theia, uh, we believe, crashed into Earth in its very early stage when it was just forming around this time. So when it crashed into Earth, uh, part of the Earth actually started uh, forming debris, right? It crashed. There was a lot of debris. And we think that debris or the small rock fragments started accumulating on the side of the planet and um, started creating the moons that go around the planets. And this includes our moon. This is our theory for just our moon, actually. Other moons may, may have created in other ways. But our specific moon, we think, created was created when our Earth crashed into a different planet or that existed around that time um and the debris formed the moon and because the earth has lots of gravity it kept the moon in orbit around the earth after that time um and yeah so this is how our solar system and, and many other solar systems formed in the universe remember a solar system is a star in this case our sun um and all the objects revolving around it and in this case, these are our planets. And remember, our solar system is in the corner right here of the Milky Way galaxy that includes billions of other stars that may also contain their own solar systems. So the, all this happened around the same time. Solar system, our solar system specifically, other solar systems might have um, started creating at different times. But our solar system, our star, the sun, our planets in the solar system and our moon um, started forming around 4.6 billion years ago. So if you want to specify right here, it's this is just our solar system and our sun right here, not just all stars, happened around 4.6 billion years ago. So the solar system shape is actually what we call elliptical, and the planets move around sun, the sun in an elliptical orbit. Elliptical means something that's not circular but slightly oval. Uh, we use this term mostly when we talk about space objects and notice that all um, of our planets in our solar system are actually revolving around the sun in an elliptical shape, kind of an oval shape. And the sun is not in the center, it's kind of on the side of the orbits. 
So if you'd like this to, uh, to write this down in your notebook, I encourage it. Elliptical means slightly oval. So our, the shape of our solar system is actually elliptical. For our stars, planets, and moons, they have rounded or spherical shapes. So they're not circles, they're spheres. And that's why the shape is spherical for stars, planets, and moons. So make sure you know all the dates and the shapes. Um, in the next video, we're going to talk about the solar system.